hydrogen. It's the most abundant substance in the universe. It provides the fuel for the fusion reactions that power the sun and is a building block of water, biology, and life itself. In terms of energy, hydrogen has long been seen as the most advanced possible fuel. As far back as 1874, French science fiction writer Jules Verne prophesied that hydrogen could be used as fuel one day. And in 2003, then-President George W. Bush proposed a research program to develop hydrogen-powered automobiles in less than 20 years. Today, as engineers look to integrate renewable energy sources into our economy better, hydrogen is getting another look as an environmentally friendly replacement for carbon-based fuels such as natural gas. Companies are developing new ways of producing hydrogen gas that will result in zero carbon emissions or even negative emissions. Other companies are working on technology to use hydrogen more efficiently than ever before in applications such as cars and power plants. With all these projects moving forward, will we finally see the hydrogen revolution? Will it become the energy source of the future? All this and more in this episode of Mechanical Engineering's Special Report. A hydrogen atom is about as simple as you can get. One electron circling one proton. Hydrogen is incredibly energy dense, meaning that burning a pound of hydrogen releases more than twice as much energy as burning a pound of gasoline or natural gas. All that chemical reactivity has a downside. Most hydrogen on Earth is locked up in compounds. To get hydrogen gas, you have to break apart those chemical compounds, which itself takes energy. That's why engineers say that hydrogen is an energy carrier, not an energy source. And even though hydrogen burns cleanly to produce only water vapor, it really is only as clean as the energy used to produce it. Today, most hydrogen is made via steam reforming of a carbon fuel such as natural gas or even coal. The carbon breaks apart water molecules in high-temperature steam to produce hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide. If the energy used to heat water into steam comes from burning fossil fuels, the carbon dioxide from that process needs to be accounted for. Depending on the process, making hydrogen fuel can produce as much carbon emissions as burning natural gas. Some companies are developing plans to capture and store that carbon dioxide to make what they call blue hydrogen. There's another way to make hydrogen without carbon emissions, through a process called electrolysis. This uses electricity, not carbon, to break apart water atoms to make hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Backers of this process call it green hydrogen. The process has been known for 200 years but up to now, it has been more energy intensive and expensive than steam reforming. Now, companies such as Planetary Hydrogen in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, are developing methods to improve the economics of green hydrogen. Its system uses an electrolyzer, but instead of simply using electricity to split water, the process adds a mineral salt to the electrolyte that results in the production of a mineral hydroxide. When that alkaline compound is introduced into the ocean, it removes dissolved carbon dioxide from the water and draws it out of the atmosphere. Often the way I look at the energy balance is I look at both the energy that's encapsulated in the hydrogen plus the energy that's required to do the CDR in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you end up with a total energy balance. And I think, you know, it's, it's pretty competitive as planetary hydrogen and other companies progress toward zero-carbon hydrogen, policy experts are assessing the economics of hydrogen production from various sources. For now, however, traditional methods for producing hydrogen have the advantage. 
you know, in our research, we see a, a mix of hydrogen production options. Green hydrogen is one, especially if electrolyzers go really, get really cheap and follow the same path as lithium ion batteries or, or solar panels, which they are likely to. But methane reforming with carbon capture, whether that's autothermal reformers or, or steam methane, that's the cheapest way to get low carbon hydrogen today and likely to be so for the next decade. Once the price of making hydrogen comes down enough, many in the field believe the fuel will become widely adopted. It's actually just getting the price of the fuel as well as the price of the equipment to parity with conventional technologies and conventional fuels. I think that's the absolute number one issue. Um, if our if our equipment and our and our fuel were at parity, I think then we could really be truly competitive. Making hydrogen is only one part of the challenge. While hydrogen is a good energy carrier, Using it to replace carbon fuels has not been cheap or easy. One of the most promising technologies for using hydrogen is fuel cells. Fuel cells work a bit like batteries. They separate ions from electrons to produce an electric current without any moving parts. In that way, hydrogen fuel cells can be quiet, efficient, and clean. Hydrogen fuel cells have been long used in space missions and automakers have put them in cars and buses to make hydrogen-powered vehicles. They can also be used in stationary applications, such as providing electricity for homes and businesses like hospitals, grocery stores, and data centers. While hydrogen fuel cells for transportation could virtually eliminate pollution from that sector, the fueling infrastructure is lacking, and the cost of fuel cells is far above that of lithium-ion batteries used in electric vehicles such as the ones from Tesla. Even so, fuel cells could have a bright future. And so I'm an engineer and it's exciting to talk to engineers, but you know, there is not enough systems level thinking when it comes to the clean transportation and energy revolution that we're pretty much embarking on. It's going to take every type of technology and fuel cells certainly can provide the backup power, base load power, um, it can decarbonize pretty much the entire transportation sector um, and and just not not just what we think of when we think about vehicles you know or surface vehicles you know it can be that farming tractor you know that's uh, that's exposing many farm workers to carcinogens it could be um, drones <laughs> you know it could be things that we don't even think about yet, which is like air, you know, urban air mobility options, like all of a sudden there's going to be air taxis um, that will be operated from uh, by a fuel cell, you know, so there's a lot of different roles that fuel cells uh, can, can play essentially. Hydrogen can also be burned like natural gas. In fact, the gas lights that lit up cities before electricity were fueled by a combination of hydrogen and carbon monoxide. When hydrogen burns, it produces only water vapor as exhaust, making it a low pollution alternative fuel. It can be used in any engine that uses natural gas. But as one Department of Energy paper put it, getting an internal combustion engine to run on hydrogen is not difficult. Getting an internal combustion engine to run well, however, is more of a challenge. Some of these challenges for automobile engines include premature ignition and backfire. But since they draw on existing automobile technology, hydrogen-burning internal combustion engines may have some cost advantages over fuel cells for powering cars. And both technologies could have advantages over electric vehicles in terms of weight and the time required to refuel. Another technology that can use hydrogen is gas turbines, which are found in many power plants. Companies such as Siemens and GE already produce gas turbines that can burn a mixture of hydrogen and other gas byproducts from refineries and industrial sites. GE Gas Power is developing projects to adapt gas turbines for power plants to run on hydrogen. So the, the great uh, news here is that all of our gas turbines are capable of operating on blends of hydrogen and natural gas. So in the specific instance of the Long Ridge Energy Terminal in Ohio, it's a 7HA02 gas turbine, you know, we're able to use the gas turbine as normally configured for operating on natural gas for the initial blend of hydrogen and natural gas. The changes that are being made are around 
having to blend hydrogen into the natural gas, but we're leveraging the existing capability of the gas turbine. The hope is that hydrogen made from renewable power can serve as a form of energy storage. Electricity would be used to produce green hydrogen, which could be stored for months in subsurface rock formations, much like natural gas is stored today. When extra power is needed, for example, during certain winter evenings when solar and wind power is at a minimum, the stored hydrogen could be brought to the surface and used to run power plants. In that way, the entire power system could become free of carbon emissions and still be as dependable as the one we count on today. The promise of a hydrogen supply chain is that the fuel can be made from carbon-free renewable or nuclear power and used to replace natural gas and other carbon fuels in applications such as transportation and electric generation. Now imagine a world where you're producing all this hydrogen from renewables. You are storing it, whether in pipelines or tanks or caverns. When you have extended periods where you don't have enough solar and wind, but now you can open the valve on that pipe or that tank and, and now your gas turbines come online and they basically support the grid. But more work needs to be done. Carbon-free hydrogen production is still more expensive than conventional steam reforming processes. Fuel cells need to demonstrate better reliability and cost reduction. Hydrogen transportation and storage networks have yet to be built. How far are we from seeing the hydrogen revolution? I would say that we are literally on the verge of basically the tipping point for hydrogen. I mean, there's so much push for it globally. There are, there are formal plans, there are formal agreements. I'm telling you, the minute that we get cost parity or close to it at least, we certainly are in business because there are operational advantages to it. People are already doing that with forklifts. They're choosing them uh, based on just operation operational efficiencies. So I think that we can see that kind of transition um, in other heavy duty industries as well. Hydrogen may be the energy solution that will help us transform away from fossil fuels. However, the how is a work in process. The energy battle is a race and the first to devise an energy efficient, low cost solution will win. Be sure to learn more about the future of energy in upcoming episodes of Mechanical Engineering's Special Report. <laughs>